<laughs> hey everyone, I'm back for my next video. Well, I'm not gonna be doing any of the usual because this is kind of like a first time, but I'm gonna do a little review of a story I read. You know, like a fanfic. Okay, it's called "A Man in a Beast's World." It's about this one particular human who's been part of a war, war that's lasted for like 25 years. Going up against a race of anthros who've taken over the planet for themselves. And when I read the story, it was. It was. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I guess. Terrifyingly intense. Like. I mean, this story is perhaps. Is perhaps the best, if not one of the best stories I've ever read on Wattpad. I mean, the stuff that guy went, the main protagonist goes through, like, like, like getting shunned by anthros, getting locked in a prison with his fellow kind, and and he almost, and one of the most disturbing things. Was he was? Uh, I can't can't believe I'm gonna say this, but molested. Uh, he still has his innocence, but uh, you get the idea. Anyway, uh, as I read further into the story, I was shocked and horrified. Like. In the story, these anthros, these enemy ones, they create some sort of chemical gas that turns humans into furries. Like, to some here in the real world, that's kind of, you think it's like awesome or rad, and I can't exactly blame you, but here in the story, well, there are fates worse than death itself. Anyway, the antagonist, that the protagonist inhaled some of this, but for some reason, yeah, it didn't affect him. I mean, all it did was just change his eyes to a purple eye color. You know, like these? Just purple. So that's the pupils and the white stuff, whatever it's called, but that's it. Which leads me into two possibilities, like, Like humans, some new humans have natural immune to diseases and whatnot, so it could be that, though that's unlikely. Or option two, like his father was apparently some kind of pilot named Hellfire or something, or I don't know. But his mother, he's once heard about her, so it leads me to think maybe his mother is an anthro. Which makes total sense, I mean, otherwise he wouldn't have been... Otherwise, he wouldn't be immune to the gas, or at least mostly immune to it. <clears throat> and as time passes, he quickly re he realizes that he's actually attracted to some of the to many of the anthros on his team. And I can't blame him. Not okay. I'm not going to be that sicko or. Just because they look weird or unorthodox or whatever, I'm just saying. Like, I don't care what they look like; they kind of look nice to me. I mean, <clears throat> well, it didn't anyway. The gas didn't affect him, but like not turning him into an anthro, but apparently it gave him some kind of weird cancer on his lungs. Yeah, right now they have to try to find the scientist who's responsible for the gas. Hope they make. Hope they make she makes a cure and he becomes all better. <clears throat> and that's not all. I mean, apparently he's this one, this his big superhuman elite group called Cerebus, you know, named after the three headed dog. Apparently, they're so highly trained that they're capable of taking down any anthro they come across. Well, most of them, anyway. But apparently, these Cerebus groups, the Cerebus group apparently kidnaps Anthros, you know, interrogates them, and whatnot, and then kills them. 
But what Chris doesn't know is that Cerberus is also taking Anthos captive, violating them in many ways, <sighs> and then just offing them, or just let them off themselves because of the shame and the trauma. But here's what perplexes me. The one Chris is a part of, always been a part of, at least to my estimation, they had white tattoos. Who's on them? But the ones that violated the Anthros in unspeakable ways, the ones I just mentioned, like, like this one character, Mika Blackclaw, apparently they had red tattoos. This gives me three possibilities. Like, like they didn't want to hold on to their ideals and decided to get down and dirty. Like, do so on their own free will. With no help. Option two, they made they made a deal with the devil in the form of the main antagonist, General Jason Python, and Python. Sorry. Okay. Who allows them to share and those who they who he believes are traitors and has them, lets them suffer. Or option th three. Option three, like, they're probably some sort of rogue human soldiers. Like, they must have slipped into Cerebus, killing actual members and taking their places. Is that's, yeah, those are the only three possibilities I can think of. As for the story, we're, we're getting down to the near bitter end. Like, if I remember correctly, the old story was somewhere between like 60 and 70 chapters. Look, granted, it's been like only like two or three years, but a lot of things can happen, so I can't exactly remember. Anyway, yeah, so like I said, this, this story is, okay, pardon my language, fucking awesome. I, I recommend that you guys read this, and I assure you, you won't be disappointed. In fact, here's some of the characters from the story. Like, here's the art from them. Hold on. Yeah, there's the main, main protagonist. Oh, yeah, you can actually find this picture on Deviant Art. Here's more. Yep, all of them hand drawn, or at least digital drawn, like you get the idea. Oh, and here's even more artwork. Like brand new. Yeah, here's the pic. <clears throat> here's a picture of the UF Specs Ops, and as you can see, second one on the right, there is the human, Chris. And from left to right, like going straight down, there is Lara, Adder. Hmm. I believe that's Lupa. Uh huh. Mika, Amber, in my opinion, Amber the Sunder. There's the cinnamon roll of the group, Yuki, and A and Ashley. Oh yeah, this Antho kind of looks like a demon. Her name is Riley, I believe. Yeah, he. Yeah, she and Chris met a couple years ago in the story's timeline when Chris was like 13. In the end, they fought each other. Chris managed to trick, managed to get her below it, managed to get her to fall all into ice, like on a river or a lake or something, by shooting it, and he took her gun. Ugh. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Oh, yeah, a little JoJo theme there. So, yeah. The reason I'm doing this, like, I feel like the... Like, in my opinion, I feel like the... The creator of this story should get more of the... Should get a whole lot more credit. That's why I'm doing this, you know? Oh, and if you're oh, and if you're watching this video, then let me know what you think, right? See, as for the and finally about the whole Cerebus thing, yeah, Chris is desperately trying to keep it a secret from them because one of the because one of the members, Lara, got her brother had her brother killed by a no by a Cerebus group, not actually like. She was in school when this happened. And as for Mika, you know, she got tortured in so many ways. Same goes for her girlfriend. <laughs> and, and, yep, I can't imagine the turmoil he's going to go through once he finds out. As well as the whole conspiracy things. Like, remember what I said? Chris has a white Cerebus tattoo. While the others that, that violated those anthos had red. And as for the whole romance thing, yeah, there's actually a, a human and Anthro liking each other. Like somewhere in the story, yeah, this one human and def defect FIA agent love each other. They help Chris and Adder break a whole bunch, dozen humans out of prison. So yeah, it is possible that they may love each other in the story. In my opinion, Either Chris and Lara, <laughs> it's completely obvious right there. Even though Lara doesn't mind sharing him with someone. A certain dragon. Yep. I can't wait to see the look on her face when she finds out the shark Lara was talking about was actually Chris. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <sighs> Look, the whole morality of this story is that, listen, we shouldn't be, tr is that we shouldn't judge people for what they are and what they look like. I mean, they're living beings. That, in my opinion, that alone makes us equals. Like, like I'm part Native American. We've gone through a whole lot of discrimination, and you know what? I don't care. That happened to my people centuries ago, but he's. Practically non-existent. Still happens, but you get the idea? I'm saying that we shouldn't be... Saying that we should respect one another for like our cultures and whatnot. Look, you, look, you get the moral of the story, alright? Bottom line, I recommend that you read this. And I assure you, you won't be disappointed. And by the way, this guy's... This guy goes by the same name on Twitter, so I hope. Hey, so I hope you follow him. Like I said, I feel like he should get a whole lot more credit for this. Hope you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a nice day.